Hello and welcome to How to Create Your Own 3D Objects. This is part of the 3D Printing at the Library series. I'm your host, David. So as a review from our intro to 3D printing, let's look at where 3D objects come from for printing. Well, the first way that we looked at was downloading ready-made 3D objects. There are a number of websites you can go to. One of them is Thingiverse.com, but they all have a selection of 3D objects you can just download and they're ready-made to go. A second option is to 3D scan an object. If you have access to a scanner or you want to use the scanner at the library, you can bring in a little object and we can scan it with different differing results depending on what you're trying to scan. And the third and my favorite way of creating 3D content is 3D modeling. In other words, creating it directly in the computer. So let's look at how to create your own 3D objects. Well, regardless of what kind of program you use to do it, what you need to create is an object of the file type .obj or .stl. So these are the file formats that you want to get. So whatever program you're using, our 3D printing system will use a .obj or a .stl. Now there are lots of packages that will let you create 3D objects. There are some really expensive kinds, there are some moderately expensive types, and then we're going to look at just the free types of 3D modeling. Tinkercad is one uh, wonderful free program. Another one is 3D Tin. I have an asterisk by the two of these to say that these two run directly on a web browser. So these two, you don't even have to install pr uh, software on your computer. You can use it directly from Firefox or Chrome or Explorer. Autodesk 123D Design is another great option for making 3D objects. It's a little bit more advanced than these two, and you have to download some, some software to go with it. It has more capability, though. Blender is a much more advanced package, and it's really intended for people doing 3D computer graphics and animation. But it has a solid modeler that uh, works very well if you if you can uh, cope with the learning curve to use Blender. So I wouldn't recommend Blender if you have never used a 3D modeling program before. I would say start with Tinkercad or 3D Tint. These are great intro programs. Blender, you could probably get into if you've had some experience with, say, Maya or 3D Studio Max. Um, another great program, though, for designing objects is FreeCAD or OpenSCAD. These two are tailored around, uh, around CAD type software. So if you have experience drafting or you have experience with something like, oh, SolidWorks or, uh, or AutoCAD, these two would probably resonate with you. You would, you would pick these up pretty fast. So uh, rather than me just talking about it, let's have you try it for yourself. Let's all look at Tinkercad.com. I think this is a great way to introduce not just a program, but ideas about a lot of 3D modeling. So if you want to, shrink this whole window down, put it in the corner somewhere so you can see it, maybe follow along, and I'm going to go to Tinkercad.com. I actually have it open in a window right here. Now I have a login with a profile. You have to create your own login, which requires you have an email address, and then confirm it. But when it loads up, it will bring you right into some tutorial modes so you can you can jump in and do the tutorials or you can uh, quit the tutorials and create a new design and we'll just look at look at this together so when you click on create a new design you have a work plane it comes in and the big idea with uh, with Tinkercad they make it very easy is building your objects out of simpler objects simpler shapes so these are primitive shapes I have over here in this palette for geometric and you know I could I could bring in a cylinder I could bring in a box if I wanted to stick these together see how they're separate objects I could drag a box over both of those and come up here to group and now it's one it's one solid object and I can move it around I can move it up and down there's a little carrot that appears on the top creates a neat shadow down here to let you see that it's elevated some. There are tools for rotating in the different axes. Notice if I rotate something, 
by grabbing on to the corner here. If I'm if my uh, mouse pointer is in close to the object, it snaps to different uh, different increments. If I move it out away from the object, I can move it much more freely. So sometimes it's handy to move in direct increments. A lot of times you want to just lay something flat so you move it 90 degrees, but you have the freedom to move in more fine motion too. You can stretch objects by grabbing the handles at their corners and pulling them out and around. So I just stretched it. I can squash the shape down a little bit. I can delete it too. I'll just click on this and press backspace. Now if I wanted to, let's see, I'm going to bring in a box again. If I wanted to make this a flat kind of plane like this, that's easy to do. And instead of just sticking shapes together, so for instance here's a cylinder, I can push that down through the shape a little bit. See it goes right through. If I select both of these things, and well, for instance, if I group it like this, now it, it just made one solid object. If I wanted to ungroup it, it's two objects again. And if I selected just the cylinder, see, I just I just clicked on the cylinder. If I click away, I'll click again. It's just the cylinder selected, and I select whole. Now it's not a colored object; it's a whole. So if I were to drag over this and group them. Now it just punched a hole straight through it. This demonstrates something very important about this kind of 3D modeling. You have the ability to not just only stick shapes together, but to carve them away. And if I were to ungroup this, I can I could slide the hole over somewhere else, select the whole deal again, hit group. Tinkercad is doing its thing. You can see it saving. And there you go. It's as if I took a bite out of the corner of this thing. Um, that's very cool. In fact, you can you can do all kinds of of uh, modeling tricks and uh, techniques to carve a shape into something uh, that you desire. In fact, I think if you if you start playing with this program, you'll start to look at the world a little bit differently. You'll start to look at the world in terms of, gosh, how do I make a coffee cup out of uh, out of carving carving shapes out of one another. See, there's that. Well, if you were to make a coffee cup, you might you might start with a cylinder like that. And gosh, I might want to I might want to make uh, make it hollow. So let's say I want to want to shrink this one down a little bit. This can be the inside. I'll make it a whole object, and I'll move it up a little bit so it's so it doesn't cut through the bottom. Now I want to put that exactly centered in there. Okay, there's a rather than trying to center something by hand, there's actually a good tool for doing this too. See, I'm trying to make a coffee cup by making a cylinder and then cutting out the inside. Well, what I could do is I could select both of those things and if I come up here to adjust and click on align, I have these alignment tools. So, I click on those. Notice it aligned it on the X and Y. If I clicked on this, it would align it up and down too. That's not really what I want though because if I, well, for instance, watch if I if I group that now, well it's not a coffee cup at all, it's just a, a section of a tube. So I'll ungroup that. And I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this down, move this up a little bit. I can kind of see where the base of it is. Something else about Tinkercad or any 3D modeling to be aware of is it isn't like drawing on a flat surface. Notice how I keep panning around. When I'm working, I'm always moving my view, always changing my view. If you get in the habit of just changing your view, and I'm doing this with, with the mouse, I'm using uh, my finger on the right mouse button. I'm clicking and dragging to, to do this. I'm also pushing down the scroll wheel to drag left and right. Um, it lets me you know, kind of understand in my mind where, where everything is. Now if I grab all of this and I group that, there, now I have a little, a little, it's like a little planter, a little plant pot. What I would need to do is put a handle on this. Um, 
If, for instance, and I was just talking about how to change your point of view, if, for instance, you get totally lost, so I'm going to drag over here, you know, where in the world am I? What am I? Oh, my stuff is way over there. How do I get, you know, how do I get back there? Oh, good grief. Well, if you get totally lost, come over here and press this button in the home. It says home. Boom, I'm right back home. So don't panic. This stuff always stays right there. So you'll, you'll be in good shape if you remember to press the home. You can also change your view by easy little increments by clicking on this little control pad. So that's fine too, but it's most convenient, I think, to just get in the habit of changing your view with the mouse by right clicking. Well, let's see. Now I'll do a handle. Okay, Taurus, otherwise known as a donut, also known as a, uh, <laughs> a, a ring that can be turned easily into a coffee cup handle, I think. So let's see. I'm going to stand it up 90 degrees. That's good. Maybe I can put that right. See, this is an example of not having a good point of view. I'm like, where the heck is this going? Oh, it's way over there. Okay. I'm going to look, try to look down on it a little bit better. I can grab that, move it in there. There. Not too shabby. That is a big handle. I'm going to shrink it. Now, if I grab a corner and squash, notice it, it changes. I can squash it in different axes. If I wanted to keep it proportionally the same, so in other words, I want it to stay, I hit undo, uh, control Z is undo. If I wanted to stay the same proportion, okay, bring it over here, just smaller, I would hold down the shift key first, and then I can grab any corner and bring it in. Yeah, so there's a little coffee cup handle. Drag it over there into the side. If I push it in too far, Oh, look, if I push it in too far, it goes right through the side. So maybe I'll, I'll have it just, just touch the edge, bring it up. Maybe I should stretch it down. What do you think? The coffee cup handle is probably more, more shaped like that. This is a somewhat stylized coffee cup handle, I think. Now if I drag to select both of those things, I come up to adjust, I can align it again. Align it that way. There we go. Yeah, now if I just select that and say group, there, yeah, I've built myself a little coffee cup. Now if I 3D printed this on something that would print with ceramic, I'd, I'd actually have a coffee cup. Our 3D printers at the library print with plastic, so uh, not advisable for a hot beverage. It would probably soften to the point that you were tasting plastic. They're not technically food safe, but yeah, it would work if you wanted to. Work in a pinch. Now I'm going to just hit delete like that. And uh, I'll show you one other thing, another another neat set of features. So this palette on the right contains all kinds of different tools. Geometric, if I open that, Geometric has all of these primitive shapes you can build things with. So, I mean, we just looked at the cube. I could put a little roof object, like if I was going to make a birdhouse, I might, I might put a roof on a roof on a cube. And again, I'd probably use the adjust align tool and I could align it that way and that way. Boy, that's kind of a big roof. Maybe I'll shrink that down. Maybe I'll I'll hold down the shift key to shrink the roof. Now, something else that's kind of interesting. Notice if I hold down shift and I'm shrinking the roof, it kind of shrinks down that way. If I wanted it to shrink about the middle, I would hold down the shift and the Alt key, and now it shrinks inward towards its middle. It's just a little little trick or a little tip. You don't need to know that actually to be up and running on 3D modeling. I'll hit Align. So it's pretty easy to build neat little shapes out of, or neat little objects out of simple shapes. Now, if I wanted to make more complex shapes, I can come down here, below geometric, and there is one for letters. So I could drag some letters onto the work plane. I could spell different things. For instance, if I wanted to, I could just make, make a little name tag, make a little name sign, D-A-V, 
my name's David, D-A-V-I. I could drag a D over, or if I didn't want to drag a D over, I already have a D there, I could go Control C and then press Control V to paste. The regular copy paste commands on most computers work. So there's my name. Uh, I could kind of try to line this up, maybe get the kerning right. D A. Wait, where's, there's no V. Whoops. Let me come down here. Great. Now, if I selected that and I went to adjust a line, I would have my name. Now I could adjust this. Whoops. Notice I aligned it the wrong way. I aligned everything horizontally, so I'll hit undo. There, I just hit undo. Now, if you really want to make text, this is a way to do it. You can you can spell it out one letter at a time, or actually I'll, I'll leave those as an example. If you come up here, there's a whole other set of tools called shape generators. It has some different things, like you can make crackled ground, rings, different sorts of things. The best tool here is text. I can set that right there. And notice it opens up the inspector. You can choose different fonts. This one's kind of funny. You can hit vanilla. It looks like cartoon font. Some kind of tech font. And then I could type my name right here. Yeah, and it's very neat. It does it very quickly, and it gives you really good fast results. Now, if you were to 3D print this, it would 3D print each of these as a separate little section because they're not really stuck together. If you wanted to, you could come down here to your geometric, and you could put a, if you're going to make a plaque or something, for instance, you could put a little box down behind it like that. And if you grouped these, group these two objects, now you've actually got a solid object and you can you can move this thing around. Notice it's just a solid thing. And uh, I'll, del I'll delete these up here. And this would be uh, a printable object. Now let, let's say I want to make one more object and it will demonstrate something cool that I think will come in handy when you get into this. I want to make a little sign for my desk. Make a little little sign that says David for my desk. Now I could drag this out. So this is going to be the body of the sign. It's like a little A-frame. I think I want to cut the top of that off. See it looks like a very sharp peak. I want it to just be kind of flat. So what I would do is I could turn this cube into a whole object. Notice I have control over the colors. I can change the colors of anything here or I can make it into a hole. By the way, with 3D printing, the color is entirely dependent on the color of plastic we have in the 3D printer at the time. So these colors don't really mean anything. So don't worry about them. I'm going to move this up a little bit and group it. There, slice the top off. Now, if I wanted to put my name on the front of that, I could come up here to shape generators, whoops, not your shape generators, but shape generators, text. Notice anything that I drag into the work plane just lands right on the table. I'm going to type my name. Great, okay. Now I could rotate this around. I'm going to shrink it, so I'm going to click on the corner here. I'm going to hold down the shift key. Make it a little bit smaller. Good. Now, notice you know, I could I could move this in like this, and I, I have these controls here. I can rotate something, so I could I could sit here and kind of try to try to make it fit. Move this up and try to make it fit right in there. That's pretty nice, but it's not. See, it's not exactly perfect. Now I'm kind of playing up the fact that I'm having a hard time. Oh no, this is so hard. It's not that hard, but what I want to show you is the easy way to do this. Instead of making something flat on the ground like that and then trying to match the angle and get it in there, I'm going to hit delete. The ground is the work plane uh, that you're given when this when this thing starts up. So it says work plane. You don't have to use that work plane. If you want to, come up here to helpers. It's just another tab in your toolbox. 
And there's uh, another button here called Work Plane. I can drag this over. Notice how it changes. Boom. It changes the, gr the ground. It changes the work plane to whatever object you want. And what that means now is if I come up to Shape Generators, if I grab the Text Tool, now if I drag it in, it will automatically go right onto the work plane. See how it's automatically lined up to that face. And I can use the tools that I already know, so I can click there, hold down Shift, or hold down Shift Alt. Notice I made, make that shrink. Now I'm going to change it to say my name. Ta-da! Okay, there's my name. And let's see, I think I'll align it, so I'll, I'll select both of those things. I'll come up here to adjust align. I'm going to align it up and down and horizontally there. So it should be should be pretty well centered, pretty well centered on that plaque. And now instead of having my name sticking out, this is good, instead of having my name sticking out, why don't I emboss it into it? So I'll I turned it into a whole object. That's what I just did is I clicked on whole and now I'm going to grab that little carrot tool and push it in to the surface. See by the dotted line you can see it's going in now if I select everything and I click group yeah there it it cut the shape of my name right into there now if I want the work plane to go back to normal maybe you're distracted by the fact that the work plane is standing up like this it's easy to do all you have to do is go back to helpers click on work plane again and just drop it on the ground and now it's back so you could go ahead and make make a placard for yourself. In fact, this object, if I ungrouped it, I could click on there. Here's the inspector. I could change it to say any. I could change it to say anybody's here. Change it to say Pam. Now it's somebody else's name. And then if I selected this and grouped it, there it's a new a new name tag, or a new a new desk plaque. I could make placards for the entire the entire library office. So if I wanted to print this now. Let's say this is done. The very last step is to name it and save it. So let's come up here. To name your object, you can go into Properties under Design Properties. Tinkercad gives you, by default, some kind of goofy name that it automatically makes up. I don't know how it does it, but I'll say Pam Name Plaque. Save Changes. So it just saved saved the changes. Notice it sort of built itself back up. And now if I wanted to download this, I would just go up here to say Design, Download for 3D Printing, and I would just choose .stl. Remember these are the two types of files that we looked at. I'll choose .stl, and here it comes. Pam Nameplaque.stl. And that's it. That is the file that I would send to the library to have 3D printed. We'll show you in a different video how to submit things to the library. You can do it by the website, but that's actually it. That's the whole, the whole step. When you're done with Tinkercad, here we are. Back to the account page, and it automatically saves all the objects you make. I've been making objects for people and for fun, for printing for a while. We made a bunch of little boxes for, for uh, Valentine's Day. Here's another name plaque I made. You can also, and I'll show you this in some other videos, you can also import more complicated objects. So you can't really make screws in Tinkercad, but you sure can import screws and objects from other programs and then combine them and put them together. So it makes Tinkercad a surprisingly useful program and really a great program to learn with. So yeah, so that was a look at Tinkercad. And uh, that was our intro to how to create your own 3D objects, 3D printing at the library series.